So, America, there is a dead bee behind me because we are facing a major issue in the United States and across the world. So it's widely known that the European honeybee is drastically declining and that this honeybee is very vital to the general environment and the way animals and plants interact with each other. So just a little quick overview, honeybees pollinate plants and cross-pollinate plants. So when it Plants directly rely on honeybees to exist. So when honeybees don't exist, the plants can't pollinate and can't reproduce. So when that happens, the plant species die down and then the animals that feed off those plant species also die down. So it's a chain reaction. It may seem like a very small thing, but at the same time, honeybees are the vital factor to lots of different plants and animals, including us, that exist on this planet. So. What you probably don't know is most honeybees in the United States are also drastically declining and people aren't paying attention to it very much. The reason this is happening is because our farming system right now is super, super reliant on uh, the use of pesticides and monoculture farming. Monoculture farming is when you're farming only one type of crop in a large area of land. Um, so that could be just large acres of uh, many acres of corn or many acres of one specific plant so that there's no cross pollination happening and bees actually wouldn't exist there because they have no work to do. Um, so did you know about this honeybee <laughs> issue? So uh, in the news uh, a couple of years ago, um, the, the big honeybee die off was kind of covered. You know, everyone asks where have all the honeybees gone? Stuff like that. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with our over-reliance on pesticides in the way that we kind of do business in the United States. Now the United States and our farming strategy is different than a lot of other places in the world that rely kind of more on a more sustainable model. Um, we've figured out how to get the most bang per buck per square foot when we are gardening. So, you know, we use certain fertilizers, we use certain pesticides, and now we're at the point where we, you know, we're genetically modifying plants and it's essentially cloning a plant. So, you know, like Tamara talked about, you end up in a situation where you have a massive cornfield or a massive you know field of tomatoes or something and because we're so good at genetically modifying organisms you actually end up with the exact same plant grown millions of times yeah. over like it's not different varieties of corn that are all their own individual it's actually the same cloned plant a million times and you know they've done their research and this this specific plant is the most hardy it's the most you know drought resistant it tastes the best it's the most plump and colorful corn and you end up in a situation that we're running into now where even though we've been maximizing our output we're having unintended consequences yeah and that's what we end up with yeah and i think it has a lot to do with the fact that the habitat is also decreasing drastically too it'd be one thing if we weren't relying so much on things that were killing the bees but we're also taking away places for them to go so when you build a new house or you cut down a bunch of trees or you just take down a forest entirely um they lose their population um i know reforestation definitely exists which helps in the long in the short term but in the short and the shorter term you're killing off all of the bees that exist there at that current moment and they're not going to come back especially when their populations are so low so there are a few ways that you can counteract what's going on with the bee population right now and that includes starting your own kind of bee garden so the way to do that is to pick native plants um, and plant native plants that um, always are blooming. So pick different varieties of things that are not just spring plants or summer plants, but things that are blooming all year long. So the bees always have a place to go. You could even just buy a bee environment or a bee home, which I, I think is just uh, accumulation it's, it's of lots of different it's things. It's like a little hut. Yeah. For, it's like a little bee bees. ecosystem that they can go and that you can give them a place to go. Um, and I think our culture in general also has a bad reaction to bees and people freak out when they see bees, but bees don't really want to mess with you. If they sting you, it's probably because you're sticking your hand somewhere that you shouldn't be or that you're in the middle of their zone. But I don't think bees are something to be scared of. I don't think we should be killing bees and I don't think we should be using pesticides in our own houses, yards, things along those lines where there are other options that are better for the environment. 
Charlie Wright Tamara. So folks, spring is coming up as you're getting ready to plant your garden. Maybe think about planting some native wildflowers, things like that. Maybe putting in a little bee hut mm -hmm. because if we don't address this issue now, 20, 30 years from now, we're gonna be wondering why nothing's growing. 